And the version is this, there's a blind man, blind man who for some reason or other has to be moved from one village to another. He's taken to the new village, he's shown his room, and he knows nothing about the new village. So he very carefully begins to move with his stick and moves where he can go. And every now and then he hits an obstacle. And then he changes direction or he moves in another way. Well, after a week or 10 days, that man would be able to move quite well in the vicinity of his house. After four weeks or two months, he will be able to move through the entire village without difficulty. And in that sense, he will know the village. But what is it he knows? He knows only where there are places where he can't walk, where his stick has hit on an obstacle. He knows where he can walk freely. But he doesn't know the village. He has his own map. And the map is not the village, but it's the map of his possibilities of walking. That is the position in which we are vis-a-vis -vis reality. So let's talk about our relationship to reality, and the atomic clock for instance. The atomic clock is considered the most exact way of measuring time. It's used to define time internationally. But did you know that in a thousand years from now, morning will not be seven o'clock, but at five? Nonetheless, humans use the clock to know what a second or an hour is. It works for us now. It is a viable construction, and it fits into the real world. This is a radical idea, but it's not completely new one. Glasesfeld was inspired and followed the work of others. Nevertheless, Glasesfeld established the two principles of radical constructivism. Knowledge is not passively received, either through the senses or by way of communication but it is actively built by the cognizing subject. The function of cognition is adaptive and serves the subject's organization of the experiential world, not the discovery of an objective ontological reality. What about in education? How does constructivism fit? Since students aren't like a container into which you can drop knowledge, the teacher isn't the holder of that knowledge. The teacher acts as a facilitator of learning, guiding students on the process of constructing knowledge. Learning is interactive, building on what the student already knows. They have an active role on it. So, knowledge will be shared between teachers and students. Of course, not everyone agrees with these ideas. Radical constructivism denies that there is reality. Radical constructivism does not deny reality. It just suggests that we do not have a way of seeing all of the reality. What is real then? Well, repeated success does not mean that one found the way. If it works out, it is one viable solution. But solutions are always relative somebody else might have another one or see things a little bit differently. Experience and perspective are important but things like the iceberg or reality are still there. Remember the blind man from the beginning? Imagine he meets someone that shows him a part of the village he didn't know. And now imagine hmm. It smells like those donuts from Bart's Cafe. Bart's Cafe? Really? I can't believe you don't know Bart's. Well, it looks like we only know part of it all. So we all have constructed our maps of the reality that we have experienced or heard of. Those maps in our minds are not fixed. And when we learn something new, we add something or adapt our view of the world. Reality is important for that, as our constructions have to fit into it. But still, everybody has his or her own map based on experiences. <laughs>